morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. We got a new dub and stuff today. We got some weather. We got a bunch of clips, which highlight a lot of news-related uh, items happening in your town of Missoula, Montana. We also have some art clips. So there's a last play of an art clip that I'm going to be playing, fe being uh, of an art installation being featured at the Missoula Art Museum, which will be closing by the end of today. I'll get to that in a little bit, but let's kick it off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 39 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 51. Your low is going to be 35. Um, Thursday, your high is going to be 52 with a low chance of 37. But of course, rain is already happening. And then, of course, that chance of rain is going to be lowered throughout the week. And then Saturday, you're going to see mostly cloudy skies. And then hopefully by Sunday, you'll have uh, some familiar Sunday uh, weather from last Sunday, which was really nice. So if you weren't out there last Sunday, it was really nice weather to see that. Um, sorry about that. For some reason, I keep on showing you the Wake Up Missoula page. But here is your weather. Sorry about that. Um, definitely not paying attention too well this morning. Uh, welcome to your Wednesday morning. This is your current um, rundown for the temperatures. 39 degrees currently. Low is 35. Again, high is 51. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what's happening in the news. Uh, um, it's raining this morning, as you already know, and the Lolo Week fire is looking to be 87% contained as of 23 minutes ago. Um, personnel have dropped to about 233. Expected f uh, full containment uh, day says October 31st. Um, Sam, Sam Gibbons, line operator uh, section chief, uh, reflects on some of the weather and some of the trends that are happening, and this is what he had to say. That's kind of our operations. Uh, the weather outlook. Uh, for the next few days, we're supposed to have a uh, weather system come in um, Thursday, Wednesday night, and Thursday again. We did get lots of pretty good rain and snow on the fire, uh, the higher elevations yesterday. And in particular, up in this area, uh, as I was up there yesterday, we had snow, uh, probably an inch of snow on the on the fire on the Alpha and Bravo. So uh, again, where you can still expect to see smoke are in these drainages any activity there and then also on the west southwest side of the fire we're still going to have some smokes in there underneath the subalpine fir and the canopy so that's kind of our operational uh we look forward to working with the with the folks here in the bitterroot valley and uh, and continuing on the good work that the uh, previous team did thank you all right so uh um as you just heard that uh most of the uh uh, teams and facilities are pretty much gone fighting the fires. All the hot shots have been moved to different locations to help fight the fires that are um, a little more uh, problematic. But r as of right now, it seems like Lolo Peak Fire is more in the mop-up phase, and they're just trying to make sure that most of it's starting to get contained, which it is. So that's good news on that respect. Uh, in other news, um, while the fire is getting somewhat, uh, some well-deserved rain and snow, Missoula is getting four potential candidates for the UM president. Murder M. Martin, senior educator, education advisor uh, to former Mexican president Vincent Fox and senior fellow uh, for the American Association of State Colleges and Universities, visited the UM Monday, um, and this is pr part of a public forum that's going to be held every Monday. It's going to be held uh, Monday, today, um, and Friday. So next Monday, we're going to have another person. But of course, here is a, a section of the Q&A from that meeting. Hi, I'm Rena Teal. I'm a student here at the university. Um, your tenure at Fort Hayes State University, the last institution that you worked at, was about two years. And when you left, it was, there were, there were some, the Missoulian described your departure as rocky, and I would not hesitate to use the same word. Um, the faculty senate, the, the uh, rep representative of the faculty senate at that institution complained to the Board of Regents about uh, something about mismanagement. I just wondered if you could elaborate. Well, you know, it's, um, I would categorically uh, deny any of that. Uh, I believe that my track record speaks as to the achievements of the institution. And I'm very proud of that track record. A president can set the vision, but I believe a leader listens to its people, listens to its needs and wants, and then together forges a vision, a strategy, a plan, so that together we can achieve that goal. All right, so that was Myrta A. Martin, uh, one of the candidates for UM president of the University of Montana. Um, the next person up is going to be um, Andrew Andy Hal uh, Feinstein.
He's provost and senior vice president for ad academic affairs at San Jose State University. He'll visit the campus today in a public forum from 3.30 p.m. to about 5 p.m. And they're going to have a uh, community reception at 5.15 at the University Center Ballroom. So once again, just letting you guys know that uh, MCAT will be streaming it. Um, the University uh, UC Theater is usually where it hosts it, and it usually fills up. So if you don't want to deal with a lot of the hustle and bustle, you can go on to MCAT.org. I'll show you the web page. So you go to MCAT.org, and you click on Local Live, and it'll bring you to this page. And then all you got to do is hit play, and then uh, when, it, when we're streaming, you'll see a picture, and you'll be pretty much good to go on any uh, and um, future shoots. I, I, any of uh, future live streamings as well, but of course that is uh, today. Um, Feinstein, Andy Feinstein, will be uh, um, basically doing a public forum talking about what he it means to be president and that kind of stuff. So he'll talk today. We'll have someone else for Friday, and then of course Monday will be the last uh, candidate, and then they will decide sometime in January um, whether which one of these candidates will be uh, president of the University of Montana. So uh, here is some new programs that are going to be airing on AMCAT. For the next couple days, we got the Last Best Conference. We got uh, APASP. We got uh, Truth About Vaping in Missoula. And then uh, that's pretty much it for a lot of the new programs that are happening. Uh, Missoula City Band should be happening um, sometime tonight as well, but I wasn't able to get a club. So without further ado, here is uh, some new program on MCAT. And when we come back, we'll talk about what's happening within the city of Missoula. Hello, hello again. Uh, well, real quick. Don't want to talk too long because I have some uh, couple surprises for you all also. Uh, but this was done within a three to four week process of planning to go over on notice. Uh, I had a 7D camera. That's it. 7D camera and I met up with the company ARC and we ended up linking up with uh, Emily. Uh, Emily Einberg, she's a consultant, and we both ran around with two cameras to shoot everything in this film and edit it within like a week, just about, just to get the ball rolling. This was part one to many. Uh, and, and, and actually, I mean, I need to get together, and I talked with Tom a little bit, I, I need to get together with you guys and actually think about the, the, the complexity and forestry is a step above because they're more of a college level view and not even a departmental level view. So I think we need to strategize about how to go about that. And there might be opportunities. John, I would also say thank you again for all your hard work. Um, I guess I, I have a, I do have a concern about that last piece as well. When you really think about, it, it feels like load, if you will, uh, for faculty is really only being, um, uh, perceived as again student credit up. I got buried usually at the bottom of the article with one line saying this study needs uh, to be looked at and it likely resulted from the dry hits. But by and large, the problem is people don't read down to the bottom of the article. They read the headline. This was uh, this was NBC all around the country before you vape. High levels of formaldehyde hidden in e-cigarettes. And some of the journalists, when I was talking to them, they acted as if I was some sort of stooge for the e-cigarette industry because I was saying that this study was wrongly performed. Lo and behold, now, about three and a half, three years later, it's now pretty much accepted within the research community that studies e-cigarettes that you need to be careful not to create dry puffs. You need to actually have human participants all right, so those are some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT this week. Um, up next, let's talk about what's happening with the city of Missoula. So I made a city council report for you guys, and this one follows a lot of different things. And But we're going to start out off with some procl proclamations uh, read by the city of Missoula's mayor, John Engen. As motor vehicle crashes are a leading cause of death, for children 1 to 13 years old, but many of these deaths can be prevented by proper use of car seats, booster seats, and seat belts. And whereas drivers who buckle up are more likely to have pa child passengers who buckle up, 
and whereas correct installation and use of car seats, booster seats, and seat belts can be challenging in getting safety information to parents and caregivers is crucial to saving young lives, and whereas the Missoula City County Health Department will have more information and car seat safety checks this Saturday at a carousel for Missoula in Karis Park from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and whereas the City of Missoula is proud to partner up with Buckle Up Montana and the Missoula City County Health Department to promote wearing seat belts every trip, every time, for everyone. Now, therefore, I, John Engen, Mayor of the City of Missoula in the state of Montana, hereby recognize Monday, September 18th, 2017, as Buckle Up Missoula Day. And All right, so that was uh, Mayor John Engen. Um, talking about that, there were two other proclamations that happened during this meeting. One of them was One Last Car Day in, cel in um, awareness and celebration of Walk and Roll Week, a week-long event that's going to be um, ending on Saturday for a 5K bike ride, just letting you guys know. Um, Missoula Motion hosts this event along with many other organizations with, that kicked off with Sunday Streets just on Sunday. Um, also, uh, there was... a uh, um, American Indian Heritage Week at MCPS schools and of course the University of Montana is also doing there's a bunch of events happening I wasn't able to basically pull up any events from American Heritage I American Indian Heritage Week I wasn't able to find it but um, in the in the City Council meeting um, Ruth Swaney basically gave a list of all the events that are happening um, so you can watch that uh, so, uh, on your own time. So uh, the proclamations are a good way to give props to awareness to groups, causes, and events that make Missoula an active member in local pride. Up next, uh, the, the, the city approved a contract with the apparent low responsive bidder, Treasure State Tree Services, uh, for removal of 62 public boulevard trees in the total amount of $47,000. $88.60. Um, here is Brian Von Losberg and Chris Boza on that. I know from prior experience with my former colleague, uh, uh, Jason Weiner, we spoke with you a couple years ago about the cases where trees were being removed that tended to straddle perhaps a property line and there might be confusion about whose property that was on. And the result of the discussion that Jason and I had with you and staff was uh, a change in the notification process by which, in addition to the certified letter that goes to the owner, door hangers are added to, again, that the, the, the actual physical property where the tree is and the adjacent two property owners on either side if it's a situation like that. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, so after those uh, meetings in late 2015, uh, we switched our SOP and so our, our operating procedure. So we do the door hanger and it goes to the uh, address where the tree is physically located. And regardless of whether it's on, you know, straddles the property line, we still notify those uh, property owners. We put the door hanger out a minimum of 48 hours in advance of the uh, tree removal. And the last thing, uh, last two things, I guess, coupled together. All right, so that was uh, Brian Von Losberg and Chris Boza. They're talking about the urban tree. Um, um, and in terms of that, they were talking about the proper way of handling the removal trees, which include notifying people within 48 hours. Homeowners are able to challenge the removal of the trees if need be, uh, but of course it really depends. A lot of trees that are encroaching on property lines may not have the that ability to appeal. Let's say uh, a tree is like growing to a certain height that's going to uh, threaten power lines, then the city's like, we got to do something about this tree. Um, and then of course, you know, you're, you're allowed to appeal and, and it's like, it's your tree on your property, so you have the right to um, appeal, of course. Uh, the city puts in money to re remove and replace trees and or replace trees, but if people uh, were to have an agreement to pay for services, they can go uh, higher up on the list um, for tree uh, maintenance, remover, removal, and all that stuff, but prior to usually follow those, those who are actually willing to uh, uh, forward some of the payments as well. Um, um, let's see, Marilyn Marler thinks this is important, but it's hard to replace uh, the trees than it is just to take them out all together. So here is Marilyn Marler. If that's, you know, the first time you're hearing about your tree coming out is in a somewhat bureaucratic letter that, you know, cites the code to you, it doesn't make you feel like spending $500 or $400 on, on a tree. And I just want us to do whatever we can as city council members and park staff and every, the contractors, everyone involved to just try to impress on people that this is really important. And um, there's not a lot of appetite for 
raising taxes for a lot of things right now, but those, it's gonna be very dramatic in about 10 years when more and more of those trees are dead. So we have to start being creative about getting more trees in the ground. And um, thank you for providing all the information and I hope that it's something we can keep talking about. I feel like this is one thing, I'm talking about it a lot because I feel like it's something that um, I wish I had been able to make more progress with during my time on council, but um, oh, the day will come when the trees start falling. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's going to be severe, people. It's happening in slow motion, but it's we got to start planting more trees. Thank all you. Right, all right. So uh, some of the background on uh, why uh, she uh, would make that kind of uh, statement as well within it um, is because a lot of the trees that were planted in the 60s uh, have a 40-year lifespan, and so far it's been well over 50 years since the trees were planted in the first place. So a lot of the trees that are uh, there are m a good chunk of them are dead like straight up like a lot of them are just like dead um of course the city voted in favor of this uh the city moves on to take about uh basically uh the um the city uh, moved on and now we're going to move on as well and they're going to talk about uh the the city cemetery so one of the things that they try to do the last couple of months is try to update the uh missoula uh city cemetery um update ordinance um one of the main big one of the things they change it to is instead of calling it Missoula Cemetery, they call it now Missoula Cem City Cemetery. Brian Von Lossberg is talking about some of the hoops and issues and uh, with some solutions to this long process that's been going on for the last couple months. They are uh, and have been responding to requests for services and concerns uh, at the cemetery and I think their actions have been entirely consistent with that. And um, as I started out saying, I think this represents um, a compromise that makes sense. Uh, the most important thing having to do with the cemetery is the quality of the operations. Uh, there are a host of other attendant sort of issues, uh, whether or not private business can um, uh, do well supporting operations. We have numerous cases of this throughout the city. Uh, road work is one of the obvious ones that comes to mind where we are sometimes able to do work in-house and we sometimes contract services out. Uh, we strike uh, we work to strike a balance of efficiency and uh, cost considerations when we do that. Um, so, as I said, I think this represents uh, an appropriate uh, balance uh, with a, an eye toward uh, maintaining quality operations at the cemetery and I'm going to support it. All right, so uh, that was Brian Von Lossberg. And with um, much support on this, there's a lot of uh, uh, folks on the city council who are kind of unsure about the process and about the update in general. Gwen Jones, uh, of course, reflects on it, uh, basically kind of acting as a outside looking in, in a way. See it historically, this city cemetery was created just as many other municipalities created their city cemetery. It's here, it's not going away. We as city council need to make sure that it runs as efficiently as possible and it provides a service to the community. And we balance that with the private entities that are out there. So I appreciate the voices that have been heard on this. Um, but I also do feel like this, the bottom line is this is a service to the public and that's how we view it. So I'm happy to vote in support of this tonight and thanks Brian for all of your work on this and to the city cemetery board. All right, so that was Gwen Jones talking to uh, reflect on us as well, but uh, they opened it up for a little more of the public comment and Rachel Parkins, uh, who is a lawyer with, uh, um, with the or organizations and funeral parlors here in town that were opposed to the update ordinance, particularly when the ordinance wanted to be able to sell uh, monuments at a lower price, uh, lower price, a competing price against some of the private businesses here in town, in which she and a couple other people, a couple other organizations here in town, sent a cease and desist letter to the city of Missoula, saying that um, we don't want this to happen. Basically, um, the city should be uh, should govern and not uh, be a uh, business. So this is Rachel Perkins. Uh, the price for the cemetery liners, as you guys all know, uh, it seriously undercuts the market rate. It undercuts the, the private industry and what it sells for um, through, through my clients. Uh, I think this is a huge problem, mostly because it doesn't seem like good business to undercut local business and then um, ask the taxpayers to, to cover that difference, to subsidize that difference. This is particularly true in this instance where the proposal to sell monuments was uh, proposed as a way to, to bring in more revenue to pay for cemetery services. If the cemetery needs more revenue, um, 
the cemetery shouldn't be cutting prices and then asking the taxpayers to subsidize it. All right, so basically um, one of the um, many things that um, were criticized from the city is that um, th um, is that they wanted to uh, basically uh, break even when it comes to a lot of the uh, cemetery uh, setting stones and putting liners in monuments and all that stuff. But many of the uh, issues that come across is that means Missoula Cemetery is such a big cemetery, and then also with uh, some of the things that they would do with their own business, it would also prevent other actually local businesses um, um, be able to sell monuments and stuff like that. And a lot of things about Missoula is very uh, heavily about buy local, but I mean with the C Missoula Cemetery, it kind of seemed like in their uh, criticisms of the C Missoula C City Cemetery is that. Um, Missoula would basically go with any option that's cheaper, regardless of buy local. So here is Rick Evans. He is the owner of Garden City Funeral Homes and uh, Sunset Memorials. Um, he speaks on the consequences of some of the lower prices, particularly with the liners of uh, the uh, of the cemetery uh, placements. It will not allow uh, a private sector to sell to sell the liner. They will evolve, but not a liner. So if they're going to lower the price at least let us recoup some of the expenses that we're going to have to lower all our prices and at least let us sell uh, liners at Missoula Cemetery. If, if the council is so worried about helping uh, a family, I'll, I'll tell you one, one spot in the, in the prices that they, they are charging, and that is a, <coughs> excuse me, a second interment fee that they charge a family uh, they're the only cemetery in town doing this, by the way. A second interment fee for a family that comes in and has their, their loved one buried maybe in 1970 and their mother dies and they want to come back in and, and rebury their, their mother in the same grave, which you can do. You can have a casket in a grave uh, and a cremation or two cremations. City Cemetery now charges uh, an extra $400 for a second interment right, which is to me, it's a gouge. Uh, all the other cemeteries, we don't do it. But so, if you're going to help the families at a grieving time, there would be a place you could lower lower your price, but not the other way. So, all right. So that was uh, Rick Evans with Garden City Funeral Home. Um, with, uh, of course, you know they voted on this, and a couple people uh, ultimately switched their votes in the city council, um, leading it to a tie in which um, uh, Mayor John Engen, um breaks the ties. And he broke the tie, and of course, the motion did pass to update the um, basically Missoula City Cemetery Board. Um, something's changed, but there's a lot of uh, to this update cemetery board that I basically wouldn't have time to explain because there's just so much things and so many details in it. You can um, look up the ordinance by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. If you want to watch the whole meeting, there's a lot more in this meeting as well. We had a lot of quotes from. Um, people who work at Garden City Funeral Homes. We've got a lot of people who work for the cemetery board. Um, there's just a lot of things happening here, um, in t even in terms of uh, more um, details in, in terms of the urban tree, um, in including some of the issues that are happening in, ar in and around town. But that's kind of an overview of what's happening in the city of Missoula. A lot happened uh, today. There's going to be a lot, uh, some meetings happening this afternoon starting. Um, at, let me just double check real quick. I'm just going on to... Uh, where you basically all you got to do is when you click on to your government, you go to agendas, webcast minutes. Oh, your government, agenda, webcast minutes. And it'll bring you to this page. And you basically click on the agenda of which meeting that you want to go check out or what meeting. And they can check out what um, basically topic they're going to be talking about. It seems like their first meeting uh, today is going to start at 1.40 in the afternoon. So um, you can expect that to um, kick off the uh, city council committee meetings. So that was pretty much all you guys need to know what's happening within the city. I gave you kind of the highlights. I always kind of, I don't really like to linger too much on the city council, but I just kind of like to give you like a fly overview of what's happening there. Um, but let's going to change the tone of uh, my morning show, Wake Up Missoula. I'm going to uh, throw it to a nice little c comedic short where I take a public domain movie and read dub over the voices. So here is dub and stuff. Algiers from 1938, and when I come back, we'll talk about events. One, two, one, two, and pose. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know you've been looking at boats all day. When are you going to get out there and get a job? I got a job. 
<laughs> you got a job? Assistant manager at Staples. It's pretty good. Hmm. I didn't know Staples was still around. Now don't sass me, woman. I'm, I got a job at Staples, and that's that. Yes, that's that, I assume. Ugh, not this again. Jeez. I just think you're cutting yourself short. You know, when are you going to learn that I'm just not good enough? You know, I got an assistant manager job of, of helping out a stapler, staple papers together, and just, you know, just... You know what, just because you light up doesn't mean you can light your problems away. <sighs> Jeez. You know, maybe you should find somebody else. Ugh. Why am I so mediocre? <sighs> well, maybe if you tried a little harder, you wouldn't be so mediocre. We all gotta accept our limitations in this world. Ever since I dressed up as Michelangelo instead of Leonardo, I just knew- I just can't accept that! It's like I'm leaving a third-person perspective, and everything's black and white. Well, which is why you got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles mixed up. Ugh, I hate it when you make sense. So what are you gonna do now? Pilates, maybe? You know, I was thinking about opening my own Pilates studio. Would that be a good idea? I'm not sure, I don't know. I, I'm kind of keen on this whole stapler situation. <laughs> you don't have to. You're more than just a stapler. You can do anything you put your mind to. Yes, even cook at a Pilates studio. You hear me? A oh, damn it, woman. Pilates isn't a food. It's a workout. Uh, <sighs> man, woman, Pilates is like a core workout. It's kind of like yoga, but more intense. You know, you know when you're like doing yoga, but it's like not. You know, it's... It's it's complicated, but it's also not really complicated at all. It's finding out a way to it's work out without like. It's not complicated. Man, I don't even know if I want to do Pilates or not. I thought you wanted to be a stapler. You know? <laughs> you can't just stand there and smoke, change your mind, and just do whatever you want. I did not marry a Leonardo. I married a Michelangelo because he could always make me laugh. But now, now you just want to be a stapler. You just want to staple papers together? That's enough now. You're acting more like a Raphael. What did you call me? A Raphael. You're a Raphael. That's what you are. I have to yell to get you. Don't you don't have to yell at me. Maybe it'd be better if you never saw me again. <laughs> just take a dramatic turn. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. So let's kick it off with the first event, which is the last day of the From the Flower Cloth to Story Cloth, and this is at the Missoula Art Museum. Uh, so I'm gonna give you kind of like, a, just a kind of look of some of the art as well. Um, um, I, you know, just a little taste. So um, here is a nice little video that was made by our very own Rick Phillips, and this is from the uh, Cloth to Story Cloth. Um, it's Hmong traditional art and woven weaves that were made. It's a, uh, yeah, I mean, look at some of this beautiful uh, tapestry, all this stuff. I'm just like making up words. I don't even know if I ever use the right word tapestry right, but it is a great art installation that's happening at the Missouri Art Museum, and it's basically going to be done by the end of today. So I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let you enjoy some of this beautiful art from the Hmong um, population. <laughs> And of course, a lot of the uh, Hmong traditional, uh, um, basically cloths, and would always tell stories about uh, history and all sorts of wonderful things as well. And um, there was a whole documentary I remember watching about it as well. And it is just a uh, beautiful culture. And it wasn't actually a culture that they 
started. It's a culture that they adopted into their own. And I think it's a really interesting uh, perspective of how they took this tapestry and basically went with it. And it's not just one that's for uh, women. It's also uh, one of the things that everybody in the Hmong um, tradition basically learned and did as well. And they used it as a major source of trade amongst their citizens. So I thought that was a really interesting uh, way of looking at, at that as well. But um, l let's move on. And, let's and that's basically that's the last day of from flower cloth to story cloth and that's going to be happening at the Missoula Art Museum pretty much until 5 p.m. tonight so you have until the end of today to check it out. Um, kids bounce in playtime in Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Um, the weather is kind of rainy outside so it would be good uh, time to be indoors. So the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena provides Missoula County and the surrounding area with the first state-of-the-art indoor sports field and it's seven dollars per child and this happens from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. S and they have an inflatable park. It's a lot of, lot of safe, bouncy uh, houses and all sorts of wonderful things there as well. Science Sprouts, they're talking about apples since apples are in season. And it's about that time to start picking up all the apples before it's too late. They're going to be having some cider and all sorts of wonderful things happening. This is, um, I don't know if they're actually going to have cider there, but I'm just talking in general of the apple picking season. Especially, um, there sh sh should be apple festivals c I mean, happening in towns and all, all that stuff. Um, but this is for kids aged two to uh, two to five, and they must be accompanied by an adult. And this is at their uh, eight twelve Tool Avenue Street. It's just across from Braffworks Brewing Company. Um, so the cost is three dollars and fifty cents per kid, ages one and older, and includes a museum administra uh, admission. Mu uh, members receive a ten percent discount. Um, discounted punch passes are available. Easy steps to ebooks. Missoula Public Library. They doing a class on ebooks. So if you are uh, all about that technology and interested in reading via your technology. They'll learn. They'll teach you how to use e-books and e-readers to access the library's collection electronically. So you can call them at 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721-2665. And that's what you can check out. Um, NAMI Crafts is happening at NAMI uh, Missoula. It's a free weekly art and crafts group for adults living with mental illness issues. All materials are provided and no registration is necessary. Um, Characters in Clay uh, Ceramics with Tracy Pondorf is at Living Art of Montana. This is started at 5.30 p.m. at the Living Art of Montana area. Um, Characters in Clay Ceramics with Tracy Pondorf. It's happening from 5.30 to 7.30. And this is going to be Wednesdays, every single Wednesdays until the 27th. So today and then next Wednesday. And then they're pretty much done with that. There's a maximum of eight participants per class time. They'll start with a, f uh, with a fun writing prompt to create characters inspired by their personal qualities and then they'll bring their characters to life in clay. So up next there's a pint and a print. Zootown Arts Community Center is curious to know more about printmaking but don't have the time um, for the five week class. Their print and a pint class sounds like a perfect match for you. A pint and a print is a monthly two hour class that offers students the opportunity to learn more about the uh, various printmaking methods that can be facilitated in our community print shop. And it's going to be at the Zootown Arts Community Center, the ZAC, on the north side at 6 p.m. There's welcoming week. Uh, there's a call governor officials to support refugees. Uh, Montana Women Vote hosts uh, um, a phone committee where they're basically uh, going to be uh, working with Soft Landing Missoula, the I um, International Rescue Committee, Montana Women Vote, the, hu the Montana Human Rights Network, and many other partners agencies around the state are joining together to call our government representatives to express our support for refugees res resettlements in Missoula. The supporters will be gathering at the wo Montana Women's Vote office at uh, 725 West Alder Street, um, number 21. Um, that's the number room. Um, it's happening from 6 to 7 p.m., so they're asking people to gather up and call the government officials to support refugees in the state of Montana. Um, intro to web design at Missoula Public Library. Uh, this is a class to get people um, initiated and try to get people to understand the web programming concepts, web, web programming concepts using HTML and CSS in support of these goals. This class is open to those age 18 and older. Space is also limited to five participants. And this is starting at 6.30 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. And this is going to be going on from September 6th through October 25th. So there's still plenty of chances to learn um, web design. Whew, I need to take a breath. <laughs> 
gathering of native artisans and li live performances. That's kicking off your Thursday uh, Lolo Pass Visitor Center. This day is a gathering of tribal artists, craft uh, people, musicians, dancers, and storytellers. Artisans will be providing live demonstrations, and authentic native art and crafts will be available for sale. Um, the feature artist is Cody Talbull, uh, Shaqual Bundy Ness, uh, Seisha Camel, uh, Pierce Phone uh, Sandoval, Chanel and Raymond uh, Harwood, uh, Ray Rando, Moses Yellow Robe the Third, Nicole and Mural Big Bow, um, live performance by Nez Pierce drummers and dancers at 2 and 3.30 p.m. at the uh, Shabala family at 11, 1, and 4.30. There's a lot happening there. You basically can gather at 10 a.m. at the little visitor, uh, past visitors, visitor center, and there's events basically going on all day. Um, so meditation for veterans uh, tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. It's Learning Center at Red Willow. Meditation for Vets is a guide to mindfulness practice, exploring the methods of paying attention to the breath and increase calm and reduce stress and no previous experience necessary. And this happens from 1 to 145 at the Learning Center at Red Willow. Lady, uh, Lady Beetle Take Flight. Um, this week, it will be exploring how lady beetles take flight at the Missoula Insectarium. These brightly colored polka dotted beetles may look like they don't have wings, but they actually sport two sets. And they will be constructing their own very lady beetle with movable wings and seeing what it takes um, to lift off and land. And you can come anytime between 3 and 5 p.m. at the Missoula Insectarium. Lego Club is happening at the Missoula Public Library for those kids who like to create and build things with little Legos, and children under 12 must be accompanied by an adult. And this happens from 3.30 to 5 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library every Thursday. Uh, leaning, to in t leaning in to change. Living Art Multi-Session, Living Art of Montana is doing six Thursdays, starting, uh, basically started last week, but it's going to continue um, all the way until October 19th. And of course, each of our lives is consistently changing, loss, readjustment, surprise, ends, and beginnings. In this workshop, they'll explore many aspects of change, the hard and the sweet. Workshops include writing, mixed media, uh, assemblage, and, and portraitures. And that's happening at 4.30 p.m. tomorrow at the Living Art of Montana. And then there's Missoula Design Excellence Workshop, Doubletree Hotel. The city of Missoula, along with the consultant team led by uh, Winter and Company, will uh, begin to refine a character management strategy that emerges from input at the first workshop. This is your opportunity to learn more about, learn more and share your thoughts. And you can join them at the community workshop uh, September 21st, 5.30 p.m. at the Missoula Doubletree Hotel. And then, of course, uh, if you haven't already heard already, the north side is taking on the west side in softball, and it's happening at 6 p.m. at Northside Softball Park. The annual showdown, the Missoula Nor Missoula North Missoula Community Development Co um, Corporation, NMCDC, who also hosts the Outdoor Cinema um, event, uh, brings together community members from both neighborhoods uh, for an entertaining uh, evening of music, beer, hot dogs, kids' games, and friendly competition. 12 players from each neighborhood will vie for the um, coveted Railroader Trophy and Bragger Nights for one year. It is a great opportunity for the North and West Siders to meet their neighbors and celebrate these communities. Um, dodgeball, um, this is really cool, and I didn't know about this until just this week. And um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena is hosting a dodgeball hosted by the Blaze 96.3 um, FM. Uh, Bay and Brewing are excited to announce that the Blaze Dodgeball is back for the fall season. The fun and games begin Thursday, September 14th. You missed last week, but there's still a chance. This happens from 8 to, n um, 8 to 10 p.m. The fall league will run for six weeks. Teams can sign up for the sessions or for just a single night, and individuals can sign up for a single night play. Teams are um, co-ed and consist of four to six adult players. The spring session will blast, and you don't want to miss out on all the fun. So... Um, that's kind of what's happening there. The dates are every single Thursday until October 19th, Dodgeball. If you're interested in that, it's going to be happening once again at the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. So uh, here are some of the uh, events happening in terms of uh, musical night events. Yum Jazz Artist Series, Marshall Gilkey's Quartet is going to be at the University of Montana tonight. Reggae runs through it at the VFW. It's going to be reggae music, obviously. Uh, karaoke Contest at Eagles Lodge, Badlander, and... Country Karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon. Tonight, of course, um, Thursday night, you got live jazz at the Plonk. You got more karaoke at Dark Horse and VFW Bar. So that's kind of the rundown on what you guys can expect to happen in the next couple uh, days. And I will get you, uh, I'll basically let you guys go. And yeah, thanks for joining me this morning. I will see you guys Friday. And um, next week, uh, flagship starts. So I'll be 
having some flagship Friday videos starting next Friday. So stay with me. Um, I'll see you guys next Friday to give you more on an update what's happening in and around um, Missoula, Montana, but also maybe even around uh, the world as well. So uh, thanks for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you.